And the good people of the Lord said, Amen. Amen. I need your help. I may have missed welcoming someone, and we're delighted to have everybody in-house today, and we're delighted to have those that are joining us from their house. So we thank the Lord for everybody that's with us, but would you help me by looking to the ones closest to you and say, I'm just so thankful that you're with me today. Would you do that? I'm thankful you're with me today. Amen. I'm thankful you're with me today. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good to us, is he not? And I want to, right here at the front door, as they put it, I want to say that we appreciate so very, very much at the home going of our precious mother and mother-in-law what all of the support, all of the love, the calls, the text messages, everything uh, during this time. And Donna's coming at this time to greet you. I just wanted to share a thank you card for my family. It says, during a time like this, we realize how much our friends really mean to us. Your expression of sympathy will always be remembered. Thank you, dear church, family, for the constant prayers, the calls, the text, the food, the love, and support during the passing of our beloved mother, Dallas Faye Manning. With much thanks and a grateful heart for myself and my family and the fam family of Dallas Faye Manning. Thank you so much. And I'm delighted to be back at home. I told all of them in Eastern North Carolina, I said, we're the rebels because Donna's entire family lives there. Now, you know, I know this is hard to understand why somebody would leave the coast, but they all live on the Eastern coast and my, my, my. Jonathan and Jeremy enjoyed that brackish water when they were pulling up that stingray the other night, but it is something else. But God is good to us, and we're delighted to be in the house of the Lord today because we know that our precious mother and mother-in-law, as I said during her celebration, she's not lost. We know where she's at. She did not pass away. She just stepped into the other room. Oh, hallelujah. And we're here to celebrate this day in the name of the Lord. Amen. Oh, blessed be the name of Jesus. We have many requests that have come in uh, today even. And we know that God is able to touch and bring forth healing. You see, our beloved Lee and Marie are unable to be here due to sickness as well. And I appreciate so much the ministry of Brother Lee Smoller, how he ministered last week just was phenomenal. And uh, just let him know it because I'm sure he's watching. Amen. <clears throat> but let's just stand right now and go to the Lord together in prayer. If you have a request or you know someone in need of prayer, would you just lift your hands right now? Oh, hallelujah. Father God, we come to you today in the name of Jesus. My Lord, we bless your holy name. We're thankful to you for your love. We're thankful to you, dear Lord, that you're a very present help. Lord, to everyone that had a request, Lord, we ask that you would touch and bring forth healing. Lord, that you would bring forth comfort, that you would bring forth deliverance. And oh, Lamb of God, we cast all of our cares upon you today Lord Jesus you see the needs of every individual that is here and that's watching and we pray for a move of God in our hearts a move of God in our lives this day in Jesus holy name amen and amen and amen if you're physically able just remain standing praise God
maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Scripture declares, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord of hosts. People come into the house of God burdened and heavy laden. People come into the house of God and needing deliverance from this and that and the other. And yet people leave the house of God with the same burden, with the same whatevers. And then we try to pull it all week long. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me when I sat and stood over there by that plant. He said, just tell them to give it to me right now. Oh, hallelujah, just give it to me right now. Would you just lift your hand and say, Father, here it is. Father, here it is in the name of the Lord. You believe him to be the miracle worker. Yes. Oh, give it to him right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That is who you are. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. You are yeah. We make miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We make miracle work. Promise keep. Light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Even when I don't 
don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop. You never stop working. You never stop. You never stop working. We make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the dark. Yes, my God, that is who you are. Testify, Robin. Hallelujah. God is good. He set you free from bondage. He come to set the captives free. Today, he said, I come to give you life and to give it to you more abundantly. He come to seek and to save the lost. He said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. And Father, we thank you today. God, you said, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. Ah, Lord, even when you don't see him working, he's working on your behalf. Even when you don't recognize it, my Lord, he's working on your behalf. Oh, testify, Donna. I cannot tell you the goodness of God and express it with words. But I know today that Jesus loves me. I know today that he is the peace speaker. He's the way maker. He's everything that we need when we submit to him. He's goodness, he's mercy, he's grace. Yes. And more than anything, he's there with you 24-7 when nobody else can be there. Never stops. When you're crossing from this life into the next life, when that loved one has to say, okay, this is as far as I can go with you, <laughs> yeah. he says, I got you, baby. <laughs> I got you. Come on home. Oh. Come on and be with me because... He is all that we're working for, that we're living for, that we're witnessing and testifying and, and sacrificing. It's all going to be worth it all. Eye has not seen and ear has not heard the glories that God has awaiting for us. And I'm so excited that today I have even more to go to heaven for. Jesus is enough that he's got more of our loved ones now and he's bringing us closer and this world is about to end and more today I realize we must be his light we must be the salt we must make others hungry we must not be stagnant at yes. this time if we or we just would worship him and, and fill ourselves up with his presence then we would have the power to go out into these highways and byways and to our families our families our lost loved yes. ones, and we could see the results of what God can do with one man and one woman. I praise him today for his love. Because he's the way maker. Yes. He never stops working. Oh, hallelujah. And Father God, we worship you in the name of Jesus. We just want to say we worship you. We bow before you right now in our heart. We bow before you in our very spirit. Dear Lord God, you're doing a work. Oh, Lord, we give you the praise. You're the deliverer. Oh, Lamb of God, as we accept you, we have more life and more abundantly as we receive you. In the name of Jesus, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Father God, in the name of the Lord, you see those that are suffering with back problems. 
Father, I believe you to touch and to bring forth a healing upon those with back problems right now in the name of the Lord. Father, you see that one who is struggling. Lord, they're just groping with that job situation. But Lord, I hear your word declaring in all your ways acknowledge me and I will direct your path. Lord, I feel that young man and that young woman's passion and I feel their stress and their anxiety. But I hear your word declare, casting all your cares upon me because I care for you. Oh, hallelujah. Give him a praise offering in this house right now. Keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We make a miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. We make a miracle work, promise keep. Father, you have prepared our hearts to receive your word. My Lord and my God, you're inhabiting the praises of your people right now. And oh, Lamb of God, I pray in the next few minutes, Lord, that swiftly passes for you to grip our hearts through the power of the very Spirit of God in Jesus' holy, holy, holy name. Amen and amen and amen. You may be seated. Oh, Lamb of God, we believe you, Lord. We believe you, Lord. My Lord, I feel his presence. Oh, how I feel his presence. How I feel his presence. I told Ted. I told Ted the other day, I said, my, my, my. I said, the way God has been messing me up, has God just ever messed you up real good? You ever had God just to mess you up? You see, we, we like things at a routine. Not just because of the stage of life I'm in now. I've always liked things at a routine. And you have too. You know, we get up at a certain time, we go to work at a certain time, we eat at certain places, we, we almost become religious about eating this place and that place, and no reason to ask where we're going to eat, we automatically know we're going there, you know, it's this day, and we're going there this day, and we become so, but there comes a time that God just comes down and just sort of messes you up. And that's how I have felt in my very spirit and God spoke to me and he said, I'm troubling you in your spirit simply because you're living in a troubled world and you're ministering to people that's living in a troubled world. And I'm troubling you to give you a word in due season. See, people, when you come to the house of God or you turn on the live stream, you don't need some kind of stereotype and some kind of being cute type whatever you need a rhema word you need a now word what's good for right now what what's touching you right now what is your bump in the road what is your trial what is your struggle god spoke to me and said the anchor for our soul do you have one do you have one an anchor symbolizes and offers things like safety. An anchor symbolizes and offers security, confidence, hope. What about this one? Stability, blessing, and consistent strength. I like that. Consistent strength. But what is it that, that 
does all these things? What is it that accomplishes these things in our heart and life? Because how many of you in the last month you've had some bumps in your road? How many of you in the last 10 days you've had some big bumps in the road? And, and as, I, as I have studied and, and trying to find the mind of God, the Lord took me back to where we're literally at today. I firmly believe, not just in the United States and the Western civilization, but I believe, my brothers and sisters, on planet Earth. And looking closely, if we might, at Second Timothy, the third chapter. Second Timothy, the third chapter. We're going to lead up. But 2 Timothy, the third chapter. Let's look at verses 1 through 5. But know this, that in the what days? How many of us believe we're living in the last days? All right. Perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Please underscore that. And from such turn away. It's pretty, it's pretty stout, isn't it? Now, when you begin to look closely at these, if we can, let's look at verse 8. Now as Janus and Jamboree's withstood Moses, so do those also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith. Now did you get that? Men of corrupt minds meaning that we're living in a day and time to fulfill the first five verses, people's minds are so inflicted and so attacked and so under assailment by the seducing spirits of this world. Paul continued to say that even in the last days, there would be seducing spirits deceiving the very elect. Now, I want you to look to your neighbor and say, I know the Lord, and I'm one of the elect. I know the Lord, and I'm one of the elect. I know the Lord, and I'm one of the elect. You say, well, Brother Mozart, are you calling me? I'm calling you a child of the Most High God. It's time for us to stand up, and it's time for us to square our shoulder, and it's time for us to say that we're the property of God, for he bought us at Calvary. Oh, hallelujah, and it was sealed when he rose on the third day, beloved, and he ascended to the Father, oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. You are a son or daughter of the Most High God, and I'm tired of the enemy trying to inflict and trying to get us to dilute and water down our experience with God because we have bumps in the road. Are you with me? Because we have pitfalls. And the first thing the enemy says, well, if you serve God, this wouldn't be happening to you. If you serve God, it would have worked out the other way. Because good 
or bad things are not supposed to happen to what? Good people. But how many of us know that that's a lie from hell because bad things do happen to good people. Things that the enemy will attack you with and you wonder, dear Lord, where did that come from? Amen. You think, oh my. And Paul said that we have to bring our body back under subjection because we're exposed to the elements of the world. We're exposed to the to all that was described in the first five verses of the world we are exposed to the seducing spirit we're supposed we're suspe suspect supposed to those people of corrupt minds and this is why you've got to censor what you watch this is why you've got to censor where you go hold on this is why you've got to censor what you wear in this day and time this is why you've got to censor how you behave and conduct yourself in in this world because beloved we're like Abraham of old we seek a city whose builder and maker is God and we're like pilgrims we're on a journey amen and one of these days and one of these days soon Jesus Christ is coming but until then we have bumps in the road and we have challenges in our life and we have bad things happening to good people Amen. So what is it that is the anchor? What is it that offers that safety, that security, that confidence, that hope, that stability? Oh, my, 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 my. I tell you what it is. It's the unadulterated word of God. If you're saved and you know it, shout amen. If you're full of faith and full of the Spirit of God, would you shout amen? If you have an anticipation of the coming of Christ, would you shout amen? Oh, hallelujah. But what the enemy will do, he will try to dilute the Word of God. He will try to water down the Word of God. But, beloved, it does not change, for it is God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. God, oh hallelujah, he's the same yesterday, he's the same today, and he's the same forevermore. He does not change. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Oh, go ahead and bless it and applaud him. So that leads me to this anchor. You see, this one says this, and that one over there says that, and, and then you've got these cute guys. I, I, I was uh, lecturing yesterday to a group of young men and women that will be pastoring uh, in the very near future in the church of God, and I told them this. I said, let me tell you something. I said, we need men and women that know how to pray. We need men and women that will take this word and hide it in the deep of their heart. And that you steal away, not with a bunch of ideas from someone else or stealing someone else's messages uh, and go to sermonnet.com and just pull it off uh, and take a cold message that's not even relative to what that brother or sister's going through. You've got to have a rhema word. There's somebody here. Your life's in jeopardy. There's somebody here. You just heard something from the doctor. There's somebody here. You've got loved ones weighing in the balances. You're somebody here. You wonder where the next little dollar bill is going to come from. There's somebody that's listening wondering where's the next meal. I've got good news. The word of God is the anchor for your soul in the name of the Lord. My Lord, he says in 2 Timothy, the third chapter and the 16th verse, I want to give you a description of what this anchor of the soul is. See, this is more than just bedtime stories. This is more than just a medical book of science. This is more than just a good read, if you will. Second Timothy, the third chapter, the 16th verse, watch this. All Scripture is given by inspiration. Well, I'm one of those New Testament guys. You know, I, I, I just don't really believe in that Old Testament. Honey, Paul writing to Timothy, he said, study to show thyself to prove unto God as a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. The Old Testament was the schoolmaster pointing to the school teacher. You've got to take the entire word of God. 
all scripture is given by inspiration of God and profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete. Some here today and watching may feel as though you're not quite complete. Well, get the book out. What's missing? Go to God and just say, God, help me. And when you seek, you shall find. And when you ask, you shall receive. And when you knock, he shall open. Just crack the book. He said that you may be complete. Watch this. Thoroughly equipped for every good work. Well, I just don't know if I've got what it takes. If you've got the word, honey, you've got what it takes. God is not asking about your talent. He's not asking about how tall you are. He's not asking about how short you are. He's not asking you about how everything's just right you are. Oh, no, beloved. He's asking for your availability. Amen. When you make yourself available to God, God says, I will equip you to do a good work. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. So today we understand that this scripture, this holy word of God is what we need. You say, well, what about this doctrine thing? I don't want anything to do with doctrine. Honey, there's blood. And then the message of the blood of Christ, there's doctrine. Amen. There's regeneration. There's salvation. It's all doctrine. What, what so many people don't understand, doctrine is simply this. Write it down in your notes. To validate what we believe and to understand why we believe it. To validate what we believe and to understand why we believe it. Example. The devil says, you don't feel it today. You're not right with God. We all know we can't trust our feelings, right? Amen. Be quite frank, I was so exhausted last night when I got home to a home-cooked meal that my precious tired wife had cooked right out of the garden. After doing that yesterday at the state office, then having a wedding, and then coming in, I ate, and I, I went to that recliner, and I died. You ever died in a recliner, guys? Gals, you ever died? <laughs> Whew. I, the grandbabies were there, and, and, and the, the kids were I said, I'm sorry. I've been, it's over. That's the way the enemy will try to get you to feel about your experience with God. It's all about feelings. Oh, I got I to gotta feel good. Praise God, I, I'm walking in victory today. Well, don't we know by now that the enemy is going to challenge that victory? Amen. That the enemy is going to try to run shot over you and crack the whip of hell and say and put you to test whether or not you believe it. So what about this doctrine? Well, you tell him when you don't feel like a Christian. Do you understand what I mean when I say that? When you don't feel like a Christian, you tell him faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith says that the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Regardless how I feel today, I'm saved because the doctrine says faith comes by healing and healing by the word of God. The doctrine says, oh, hallelujah, if I believe in my heart and confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, I shall be saved. The doctrine said when the Lord was, came out of the wilderness after 40 days and the devil was there to tempt him and said, if you'll do this and this and this, Jesus replied. He didn't reply, well, I'm the son of God. He replied, it is written, oh, hallelujah, this is what validates what we believe and what we understand in the name of the Lord. Oh, give him a praise offering. This, he says, is good for doctrine. Then, we, we, we don't like this word reproof. Well, why not? We're living in a world that don't like censorship. The word simply means censorship in our life. 
if you want to know how to live for God, open the book. Don't follow him and her. Because him and her is liable to be so religious, they don't lead nobody to heaven. Everything's wrong. Hear me? Or, on the other flip of the coin, him and her is liable to be so liberal and don't believe this word to begin with and thinks the culture is what's to change the word. The word is to change the culture. So we have to have a reproof. He said it is good for the censorship in the life of the believer. He said, let your moderation be made known unto all people. Moderation in everything that you do, not just in eating, you know. It's amazing to me, and, and I'm just going to say it. It's amazing to me how people that have ministered would condemn somebody that's struggling with something uh, other than eating and having a spirit of gluttony. Amen. Hear me. And they weigh, they top out about 350 or 380. And I know I'm not no little guy. Amen. But hear me. There are those that will look down at that person that's struggling with this or struggling with that. And yet they can't pull away from the fork. You see, we're choking at a gnat and swallowing a camel. This is why we've got to have true biblical censorship in our life to understand what holiness is all about. Holiness, beloved, is not how long you dress and how long your hair and whether or not you go there or go there. It's holiness is whether or not your heart has been sanctified and washed by the word of the living God. Oh, hallelujah be to God. Get back to the word for the word will give you the censorship. Then he said that the word of God is good for correction. Oh, you're not talking to me. Don't tell me what to do. Well, I'm not. <laughs> Mercy, no. But he said he would quicken us in our mortal body. You know, my dad, when I was a boy, always loved to play basketball. And back in the day when neighborhoods were safe, weren't they fun? I mean, my word, they, they were just, they were great to live in a good neighborhood. People always want to know, where's the best neighborhood to raise my family? Everybody get out and shoot the hoop and, and, and have the little whatevers. And, and then parents, supper time came. Dad would just stand right out on the porch, put his fingers in his mouth. And, and I've never learned to do it. And I believe he could stop a freight train. And all of a sudden, it didn't matter if I was going up for a hoop or fixing to play center. Go poof! <laughs> everything stopped. I mean, everything stopped, and everybody knew my dad. And they said, "What's your mom cooking for supper?" Because <laughs> they were ready to go home, because Dad had whistled. But if I didn't respond. And he come around that curve. He wasn't driving. He wasn't on no golf cart. He wasn't in. The, he was walking. And I didn't just say, "How you doing, Dad?" Oh, I, I put, I walk briskly. He said, "Son, it's getting cold." We look at the Word of God because this is God. Like God is some kind of big old fly swat. And the devil will tell you he's just waiting on you to do something wrong. He, he don't care about me. He, he don't love me. Well, beloved, he said, I would above all things that do sin not. But if you do sin, I'm not ready to mark you off. He said, if you do sin, you have an advocate with the Father through Christ Jesus, our Lord. I don't see no perfect people. And you're certainly not looking at a perfect per person. Paul said, I have not yet apprehended, but this one thing that I do, I forget what's behind me, and I press on. 
Oh, hallelujah. You don't just skip your way into heaven. Amen. There's some times you've got to press against those bumps in the road. There's times you've got to climb the mountain of life. There's times that you feel as though your heart is ripped out and walked on and you say, dear God, but the anchor of the soul says, cast all your care upon me for I care for you. The anchor of the soul, I'm near of the who of a humble and of a contrite heart. The anchor of the soul said, call unto me and I will answer thee and I will show thee great and mighty things. My Lord and my God. Oh. Correction where? Read the whole word, ladies and gentlemen. Correction in righteousness. Let's get it right. Hold on to your seat. It's not a church of God thing. It's not a Baptist thing. It's not a Methodist thing. Put any tag on it you want to. It's got to be a God thing. Hallelujah. When we understand, he said, correction in righteousness, how we ought to live and follow Christ to be right and to be right as a believer. Dad used to say, well, if you'll just turn right and go straight, you'll make it. I like that. Just turn right and go straight. And then he'd say, watch out for the bumps and the pitfalls. Straight and narrow is the way that leads to where? Life everlasting. Now, beloved, it's amazing to me, I, I can't even get over it, that it's only four years before I celebrate 50 years in ministry. Honey, we're going to celebrate if the Lord tarries. But I'm looking for him today. Because I've read it in the Word. But I remember when I started out. And I started out preaching. Just as a boy preacher. And when I started to say something and I said it. The anointing was upon me. And then all of a sudden that unction lifted when I said it. Do you hear, hear me? Because it was a thing of then. And immediately in my heart, in my spirit, I started praying, God, forgive me. Where did I go wrong? And I literally, they had a brand new, special, custom-made podium. And I called for an altar call. The altars filled up. And I went down through their praying for them. And then I put myself in that podium. And I crawled up in that podium as a six foot three, 150 pound young preacher boy. And I took this book and I held it close. And I said, Father, forgive me. What, what, tell me, what, what did I say wrong? He said, Don't follow what others say. And don't follow what others do in the pulpit. Have your mentors and have those that you love. But I've called you to preach my word and nothing else. Just stick with me and I will anoint you. I've never regretted that godly advice for these 46 years. I'm here to tell you we can't run after everything that squawks and talks and claims to be called. You've got to know what thus saith the Lord. For this is the anchor. This is the anchor of our soul. I don't understand why we don't obey the word. The scripture said if they don't accept it, come out from among them. They have a form of godliness, but come out from among them. Honey, it's time for the church to be a militant church and to understand the dunamis power, the anointing of the Spirit of God. My Lord, that we may be equipped and know that we're walking in the faith and the power. Hallelujah. My Lord, equipped for every good work. Well, I just don't feel like doing anything good today. Stay home. Get in the Word. I don't feel like doing anything good today. I just wish, you know, just, 
Honey, let me tell you something. We have this treasure in this earthen vessel. Look over to your neighbor and tell them, you are a beautiful person. You are a beautiful person. Now, how many of you believe that? Do you really believe that? I'm going to date myself. Everything is beautiful in its own way. You can finish it later when you're doing the do si -do with your wife tonight and looking in the deep of her eyes. The enemy is doing his best around this globe. It's no longer just at home. But if anything, this pandemic has brought to our attention how the enemy is working around the globe. But it's this name and it's that person. No, no. It's, it's this party. It's that party. No. The scripture said in the last days perilous times would come. They just don't have sense enough to understand that they're being used by God to usher in the end time events. That's what's happening. So simply put, the anchor of our soul is the B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction before leaving earth. And when you have those tough times and you wonder, dear Lord, how am I going to make it? Open the book. Keep it open. God gives you a promise. Keep it open. God gives you another promise. Keep it open. And you declare the word of the Lord. But we have been in a day and time where people have put more stock in personalities because what they were supposed to have been standing for. Only to be disillusioned when we've got to take the Word of God and understand David, who was so transparent in his walk before God, penned in Psalms 119, Thy word have I hidden in my heart that I may not sin against thee, O Lord. Now get this, some people's real hard about David because he wasn't one of them characters you'd want him to take your wife on a picnic. He's one of, he was one of those characters that he shed so much blood until the Lord didn't even allow him to build the temple and told him who would build the temple? His son Solomon. But yet David was so transparent. <laughs> Hallelujah, come on. Honey. He was so transparent. And he knew when he did wrong simply because of the doctrine that validated what he believed and why he believed it. He knew when he had error and sin in his life because of the reproof, the censorship in his life through the power of the Spirit. He knew when he was corrected in the righteousness of God how, how he was to live before God by the Word. And knowing that he was equipped, he was anointed to do the things. And he said, God, the bottom line is, But when he lost his son, playtime was over because he made his mind up. 
I cannot call my son back to me, but I can go to my son. You saw a difference in his life from that day on, brothers and sisters. You saw a David that says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. <laughs> You saw a David who said, I will lift my eyes unto the hills from which cometh my help, for my help cometh from the Lord. You saw a David who said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And then you hear the Lord speak. And the Lord said of David in the New Testament, if I might add, He was a man after my very heart. You get it? Because of the Word. What do you hear the Word telling you right now? How can I, in all honesty, just give a stereotype, generalized altar call? When there's nothing generalized here, some of you, your mind's being bombarded and you need a washing of the Word of God. Just wash it away. Some of you, your heart's racing because of the censorship through the Spirit of God. God saying, this Word is for you. Just receive it. And you're saying, I'm, I'm not sure how to receive it. Just like you would receive if I were to come and hand you this mic. Just say, okay, God. I don't know what you're going to do with me. I don't know how you're going to do it through me. I don't know what you're going to do. Here I am. You'll feel a peace that passes all understanding. But I know today that we have people that's part of this church that's on death row. You say, really? Death row? Yeah. They've got the sentence from the doctor with terminal cancer. They got the sensor from the doctor that your loved one has to be on hospice now. Next week, it might be you. It might be me. Do we know where we're at with God? Some are wondering, dear Lord, what, are, what should I really do with my life? You know, this COVID thing has really messed up a lot of people's lives, and, and they, they don't know what to do. You know, you, you listen to that, and, and, and you say, well, okay, I, the COVID offered me this for my mortgage, and then only to find out you got to catch up what they supposed to have. Are you with me? I'm talking about real life problems. Some of you as husband and wife, you're sitting here and you got some issues going on with your, with your family and you don't know and, and it's bringing tension between the two of you and you're thinking, dear God, I don't want this tension. And oh Lord, there's some of you watching my live stream. Your heart is breaking right now. And some of you are wondering, God, can you really fix me? What we need is an anchor to give us the stability, to give us the hope, to give us what we need that is steadfast and sure that will see you all the way home. Last Saturday, as I walked across that church platform, and I went to the podium and I started the celebration of a dear woman that I have known for 41 years. For I knew her before we got married. And I watched her through some tough times in her life. I watched her when she didn't feel religious and I watched her when she was full of the Holy Ghost just shouting under the anointing. And I watched her when she was saying, John, we got to pray. But I also stood. And this blessed some of you last time, and I'm going to share it for those that may have missed it. But when I first took Donna home before I came back so I could pastor, I walked in. She was lying there in the bed. I'm talking about real life, people. Hold on. 
she was sitting there talking to us. She, she couldn't get up. She was in the bed. She was, of course, with hospice. And, she was, and then all of a sudden she said, Oh, there's, there's Jesus. Now, honey, you, you don't play that. Woo! Hallelujah! She said, Oh, and Tammy, Donna's sister, she said, Mama, what does he look like? She went to identify what he looked like. She couldn't talk in English. She just started speaking in tongues. And then she'd go to speak. And she said, Mama, what you say? And she just started speaking in tongues. <laughs> Let me tell you something, honey. Once you have given your all to God, the devil cannot cross the blood of the Lamb, resurrected Son of God. He can huff. He can puff. He can blow. But on that day, you're going to be welcomed home in the name of the Lord. Would you stand and applaud the King? of glory oh would you applaud the king of glory oh would you applaud him with praise hey hallelujah 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 get that in your spirit he cannot cross the blood <laughs> Woo! I loved it when my dad said on his dying bed in 1988, he said, the devil better not tempt me with eternal life. I'm ready to go. I love it. My Lord, he is here. Hallelujah. He is here. name again he is here listen closely hear him calling out your name he is here you can touch him you will never be the same what is your need? Whether you're listening at home or we'll be listening through the week, what is your need? What is your need right here? What is your need in this house? If you have a need right now, I know we had the prayer request, but I'm, I'm, the Lord is looking deeper into your heart since this message. What is your need? What is your need? What do you need God to do for you? Oh, hallelujah. If you have it, would you shout amen? If you have, amen. Now, would you just lift it to the Lord right now and say, Father, here it is. Amen. Would you just as a symbol, just say, God, here it is. Amen. In your own way, just cast it upon him right now. Oh, amen. He's calling out your name. He's calling out your name, brother and sister. He's calling out your name. He's wanting you to know he's got you in the palm of his hand. He wants you to know that you're not your own. He wants you to know that you're fearfully and wonderfully made. He wants you to know his hand is upon your life oh yes reach out and touch him reach out and touch him in the name of the Lord reach out and touch him in the name of the Lord oh just let him touch you right now would you just begin to pray aloud as you feel comfortable doing so would you just begin to pray aloud as you feel comfortable doing so in the name of Jesus oh hallelujah Oh, Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God. Lord, you see that one who had to be taken to Erlinger. We pray for them. You see that dear sister, Lord, who went with the implant of the pacemaker and the ablation. God, you see that one that is at home with their bodies racked with pain right now. You see that one, dear, dear Lord, is no longer talking, but the husband is there assisting them. Oh, God, you see us all as we stand in your presence right now. 
in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. My Lord, if you're here and you desire prayer for anything, please feel free to come. How many of you know that God has touched you and spoke to your heart and life today? Would you just give him a praise? Amen. Just give him a praise offering. Amen. Just give him the praise. My Lord. Now I want you to beware. One thing that I want to tag on is a PS. The enemy will try to put you to sleep when you get this word out. That's okay. You'll wake up eventually. I told him, I said, don't fool with me, devil. I need to rest. <laughs> but when I woke up, I opened the book, and I began to read it. I challenge you. People, people's minds are so full of life until they say, well, I've heard this so many times, even from young men and women. Pastor Motes, it's hard for me to comprehend. Don't try to comprehend. Just, just start reading it. Just start reading it. And then at the right time, the light will come on through the power of the Spirit. Because the letter by itself kills, but the Spirit breathes life into it. Take the Word. Make it part of your life. Read it in the morning. Read it. Read it. And read it. Father, I have ministered this Word as you have so ordained. I love these people. God, you've got your hands on the Our Mercy Church of God. And you're just bringing people literally from everywhere. And oh, I thank you for freedom on the outside of the arm of evangelism this church has. I thank you for those that they fed Saturday that were homeless. <laughs> I thank you for everyone that is tuned in and will be tuning in, and I thank you for everyone who walked into these doors today. But God, we've got to reach the lost. We've got to affirm each other. So devil, as the shepherd of the sheep, I tell you, get off their backs in Jesus' name. For we believe the report of the Lord that as we submit ourselves unto God, you run in sheer terror. And oh, we believe the report of the Lord that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. We believe the report of the Lord that you take the bad and make good come of it. And we believe the report of the Lord that as we earnestly contend for this faith, one day our eyes shall behold you in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. And the people of God said, amen. Are you ready to give of your tithe? Yes. You ready to invest in the kingdom? Amen. Amen. For right now, we're still uh, receiving the offerings as you're departing. Is that still working for you okay? All right, even if you want to visit and fellowship, just go back there and put your tithes and offerings in, then come back and visit and fellowship for our brothers are there waiting patiently. May God richly bless you. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for your giving and worship. Thank you for giving of your time being in the house of the Lord. And if you have been blessed by God, let him know today in the name of the Lord. Let's give him a praise offering in this house today. Oh, how Hallelujah. We bless the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, God bless you in the name of the Lord. Don't hurry off. Have a time of visitation. Blessed be the name of the Lord.